Welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Yes. Uh, 66 year old female patient uh, came to our ER with a left sided chest pain uh, since three days. On initial 10 second assessment, patient was conscious and oriented. Patient was able to complete full sentence. On airway, it was patent, no pooling of secretions, no hoarseness of voice. On breathing part, air entry was bilaterally equal. Thrust rate 20 per minute and saturation 95 percent in room air. Uh, on circulation part, uh, due to chest pain, we initially connect the cardiac monitor. The cardiac monitor showing uh, 166 heart rate with a wide QRX complex regular rhythm wave. And heart, heart rate on 166 per minute, BP is 140 per 90. All peripheral pulses are palpable. Disability GCS is full and people are bilaterally equivalent reactive. And exposure temperature normal and GRBC is normal. Okay, so uh, we have an uh, 60 year old, 66 year old lady who had come with chest pain to the ED mm -hmm. and you are looking to the ECG and uh, ECG showing a void cure of tachycardia. So that is the uh, outcome. So, how, how will you approach this patient now? Uh, what was the pain score? What is the, exactly the chest pain? It, it was an uh, the no pickle cardiac pain or uh, the patient had any symptoms now? Uh, no, 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 there is no ongoing pain. Now there is no, no ongoing, ongoing pain. pain. The patient don't have any chest pain. Uh, patient had a history of chest pain. Chest pain in three days. Okay. So she went to an you know, OP by basis. Okay. From there they take an ECG. They seen a wide chorus complex. They shifted the ear. Okay, okay. So that is a history. So she don't have any chest pain at this moment. Only she is having a wide chorus tachycardia. Okay. okay. So how will you approach now this wide chorus tachycardia or any tachycardia for that person? Uh, normally, white chorus tachycardia, if the patient was white are stable, uh, then we do uh, medical management. Uh, stable wise, uh, if there is any hypotension or there is any altered sensorium, okay. or patient is in shock or there is any ongoing chest pain. Uh, if the, these conditions are ruled out, if there is nothing is there, then we do in medical management. Manager. So, we have to see any tachycardia that is coming to us, our answer should be whether the patient is stable or unstable. So, unstable, it's not just the vital sign. It is one of the sign is vital sign, that is hypotension. And otherwise, it is the perfusion to the organs. So, if it is up, brain, it is affected, you will get altered sensorium. If it is get to the chest, it will get chest pain. Then you have cardiac failure sometimes and hypotension. If the patient doesn't have anything, then you can wait and watch and you can go ahead with the medical management. So, what is the medical management that you wanted to start in here? In the QRS complex, normally we start with uh, amiodarone. Okay. Uh, amiodarone 150 milligram uh, start for our 10 minutes. Okay. Then followed by we start infusion. Okay. Uh, 1 milligram per minute for 6 hours and 0.5 if it is recurring then we start 0.5 milligram per minute for uh, remaining 18 hours. 18 hours. So uh, the simple it is a simple algorithm it is the tachycardia algorithm what we are discussing as per the ACLS. So the patient has got a tachycardia and she is hemodynamically stable and then you have gone and assess the QRS and the QRS is void QRS. Mm -hmm. So that's it we are not going into term it is a VT or SVT with aberrancy and all those things we are not discussing at this point of time. What we are just seeing we are seeing a void QRS tachycardia and we are seeing a void QRS tachycardia and the patient is stable you can go ahead with the medical management. So we went ahead with the medical management with amiodarone is the choice of agent and uh, 150 milligram uh, IV you can give and uh, followed by uh, 1 mg per minute for the next 6 hours then 0.5 for the next 18 hours. So that has been to be started. So ventricular tachycardia, uh, whenever you get ventricular tachycardia you can have three possibilities, right? So overall you can get ventricular tachycardia. One is the pulseless ventricular tachycardia. Mm -hmm. So when you get a pulseless ventricular tachycardia, what is the treatment? Mm -hmm. Shock. Uh, it is defibrillation, defibrillation is the treatment. So pulseless ventricular tachycardia, always remember mm -hmm. defibrillation followed by CPR. Yeah, and yeah. only after uh, two shocks we need to consider regarding mm -hmm. amiodarone or even lignocaine can be tried. Mm -hmm. If you don't have amiodarone, you can even give lignocaine. And second thing is that you can have ventricular tachycardia which is stable. That is what you have seen in this case where we have gone ahead and given amiodarone. And third option, you can have an unstable ventricular tachycardia where you have to defibrillate the patient using cardioversion. It is not defibrillation, sorry for that. It is cardioversion. You have to go ahead and cardioverse the patient. So, cardioversion, you have to joules again 100, 100. to 150 joules is what is required for that uh, cardioversion. So, that is the three options that you need to uh, keep in your mind. And depending upon the morphology of your VT, how will you divide the uh, VT? What are the different types of VTs? Uh, 
വീട്ടിൽ ദർ ഇസ് മോണോമോർഫിക് വീട്ടി പോളിമോർഫിക് വീട്ടി ഓക്കെ പോളിമോർഫിക് ദർ ഇസ് പ്ലിയോമോർഫിക് വീട്ടി ജി <laughs> RBBB like morphology you can have an LBB like morphology so what was the morphology for this patient uh, this patient is LBB LBB or RBB type it i think in the patient had an RBB, RBB type morphology to my knowledge what i remember why that is important what, to understand the morphology of VT why that is important is the VT with the aberrancy no no i am not asking VT with aberrancy i am just telling you RBB morphology and LBB morphology mm. I am asking, you can have two types of white QRS. You can have LBB type white QRS. You can have RBB type white QRS. See, what is the difference is that when you have an RBB type morphology VT, then you can think that the source of ventricular tachycardia is from the left ventricle. And when you have an LBB type of uh, ventricular tachycardia, the source of the scarring or whatever be it is, the scarring would have happened from the right ventricle. so it's vice versa when you have lbb morphology you think about and scar that is getting uh, arising from the right ventricle and when it is rbb morphology it is low on the left ventricle so commonly when you see it is right ventricular branch block morphology is that what we see because scarring most commonly seen in your left ventricle so that is the one important thing so looking at the morphology of vt we can say whether were exactly we are having an anticipating a problem so that is the uh, major idea so then you have got to come to the next thing you have to you said regarding how to differentiate i am asking a patient is already having an bundle branch block for example this patient is already having a left bundle branch block imagine that this patient is already having a left bundle branch block and over the top he she developed a tachycardia so whether it can be a sinus tachycardia 150 heart rate sinus tachycardia she can come to the ed mm-hmm. or she can come with vt also mm-hmm. so we need to differentiate between all those things so sinus tachycardia definitely you will have a p wave followed by your qrs complex whether it is void or not but whether it is svt you said regarding svt with aberrancy svt with a bundle branch block the same lady can have an svt also mm-hmm. so whether how to differentiate now that is the uh, in an ed setup we can give amiodarone there is no but as an emergency physicians and when we are starting to learn more things we should be able to differentiate between an svt with aberrancy and a ventricular tachycardia so that is a very important thing so you have got a lot of criteria so you have uh, starting off with the brugada's criteria where you first look at the axis whether it is a northwest axis then it is that is extreme axis deviation it is more suggestive of vt mm-hmm. then you have to look in for the what is the next step concordance Uh, first you check for the concordance mm. concordance means a uh, all, all positive direction or all negative direction if there is discordance is there then it becomes svt more chance for svt uh, then rs complex interval if the rs complex interval is more than uh, 100 milliseconds or more than 2.5 small square it is uh, written for vt vt then av dissociation so these are the three important things when you we cannot measure all those things every time but one common thing what is looking for is an av dissociation so how does an av dissociation look in your ecg so that is very important so you have to understand what is happening what is ventricular tachycardia there is a normally an impulse is getting generated from the sa node and from that sa node it is getting transmitted to the av node and both the ventricles are simultaneously that is again very very why i am telling it again and again that is the way by which a normal qrs is formed whenever you are getting a wider qrs complex that means not both the ventricles are not simultaneously stimulated one after the other when one ventricle is stimulated after the other you will get a void qrs so that is why you are getting a void qrs in your lbvv mm-hmm. or your rvv because left bundle is blocked so from the right side the impulse is going to the left side so the first initially the right ventricle is stimulated from right ventricle it will pass on to the left ventricle and the ventricle is contracting so that is why the qrs duration is getting wider similarly for rbvv so what will happen in a ventricular tachycardia there is an impulse that is getting generated from either of the ventricle that's what i said the morphology by looking at the morphology you can say whether it is from which ventricle so we are getting for imagine you have got a left ventricle there is a source whether it the most common can be a scarring following an mi 
from that source an impulse is getting generated the intensity of impulse is such a that it is overriding whatever the impulse is getting generated from the SA node so it is taking the lead mm -hmm. so what will happen whatever the impulse is getting generated from the SA node is not getting transmitted properly but atria is also contracting mm -hmm. so whenever your atrial contraction is happening you will get the P wave mm -hmm. So what will happen? This ventricle is contracting. So whenever the ventricle is contracting, what do you need to remember? There will be only QRS complex. It will be only void QRS complex that you are able to see in the ECG. So it's from a single source. It is a void QRS. Morphology will be monomorphic. Mm -hmm. What is AV dissociation now? So one atrial impulse is getting generated. So that is the P wave. That will somewhere and in between this ventricular tachycardia QRS complex, you will be seeing some slurring in the QRS complex. So that is what is basically your AV dissociation. So whatever impulse that is getting generated from the atria, in between, in between, you may be able to see a P wave that can be buried inside the QRS complex or you might be able to see as a separate P wave also. So that is what is AV dissociation. So when you look at an ECG and quickly look at the AV dissociation, if you are seeing AV dissociation, it is proven that it is ventricular tachycardia. So that is one thing. Next thing what you said is the fusion beats and the capture beat. So fusion beat and capture beat is basically, fusion beat is simple, an impulse is generating from the SA node and it is coming down and, and also an impulse is generating from the ventricular tachycardia. Both these impulses are fusing together. So when both these impulses are fusing together, what will be the morphology? It will not look like a normal, it will not look like an VT impulse also. It will look something in between. So when you are having an morphology of not normal and not an abnormal VT, and something in between that is called as the fusion beat. So both the impulses are fusing together and finally the capture beat. So capture beat is simple, your impulse is coming down mm -hmm. and it is getting captured into the ventricle just like a normal pathway it is going but it will not look exactly mm -hmm. like a normal QRS complex or normal P wave QRS complex you will not be able to see. So these three things whenever you see that is pathognomonic of your ventricular tachycardia. So why you wanted to differentiate this? That is the question. Why you wanted to differentiate this? Uh, in SVT, with aberrancy, we treatment as yeah. SVT means uh, adenosine. Like they are also can see when in general you look, amiodarone mm -hmm. can be given for both those things. But just for the understanding, and we need to further follow up the patient. So when you have a VT, definitely you should evaluate why there is a VT. What is the reason behind the VT? Whether there is any scarring of the myocardium that has happened, or any structural abnormalities are there. So that definitely need to be identified. But if if it is an SVT, I will be okay. SVT can be. You will not find any reason. You can have suddenly the patient can come up with SVT. Maybe you just need to send sometimes very rarely to be with a beta blocker. But if it is a VT, the patient can go into a life threatening arrhythmias. So that is very important. So this differentiation you should be knowing not the initial phase of treatment but later on you definitely should see and uh, you should always always use these criteria what are be it is you call this Brugada's criteria or what are be it and you need to differentiate between VT and SVT. Okay so what was this patient she is having a ventricular tachycardia only and what were the ECG finding you were able to see fusion beats uh, capture bits and fusion beats and fusion beats and AV dissociation yes. everything was there yes. so she had all those things so it was pathognomic of ventricular tachycardia and next thing what was done for her we started her on amiodarone infusion amiodarone then later on uh, later on they do an echo echo, echo uh, showing hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is there okay and intermittent uh, AF is there okay so she also had an intermittent atrial fibrillation on top of that she also having a uh, ventricular tachycardia also uh, then uh, there is normally in hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia is the electrolyte imbalance causing the see this any patient uh, first imagine any nuance of it yeah, the first thing you rule out is a myocardial infarction this patient also had a chest pain so rule out a myocardial infarction then you look into your electrolytes mm -hmm. when you look into the electrolytes three electrolytes you need to remember is potassium magnesium calcium three important electrolytes whenever you see arrhythmia are these three things like potassium magnesium and calcium you need to look in for sodium un unfortunately won't, won't, won't be affecting your conduction system so these three electrolytes and always always remember the first thing that you need to look in for any arrhythmia for that reason is a myocardial infarction so you have to send your cardiac enzymes and you see how is the patient is then definitely you have done an echo and this patient had an 
hypertrophic cardiomyopathy it is not hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy this patient has an hypertrophic cardiomyopathy maybe some area of this hypertrophic area she would have developed this ventricular tachycardia ventricular septal hypertrophy is was there so that is the reason so yes, when it is generating from the septum no then it is more difficult when it is getting generated from the septum you might not see a proper white qrs you won't see an arrow qrs also mm -hmm. so the qrs will be something like 2.53 you will not be seeing if it is properly from the ventricle you will definitely see a white qrs but if it is from the septum it is again difficult to say whether it is clearly a white qrs we have got diagnostic dilemmas at that point but it is okay we can treat it with amiodarone and what was done for her amiodarone infusion was started uh, the rhythm bar and rate has uh, controlled uh, then she uh, echo was done and then she discharged with uh, amiodarone and warfarin also okay warfarin why because of atrial fibrillation they have started on warfarin and definitely she need an what uh, icd implantation she need an icd implantation definitely because of this she will go in for uh, further uh, uh, episodes of ventricular tachycardia she needs an icd implantation maybe later on they will be planning for that okay anything else that you want to add on mm. regarding ventricular tachycardia mm. So if it is uh, stable uh, bt we can uh, treat it with uh, beta blockers also in oh. initial therapy which is uh, known as un unsustained it's unsustained means it is less than 30 ah, seconds then you have questions yes yes come carry on unsustained bt ah, is sustained bt sustained bt less than 30 seconds less than 30 seconds okay sustained bt is following uh, more than 30 seconds okay then more than 30 seconds sustained bt it is better to start with uh, amiodarone okay what is uh, accelerated ventricular rhythm This is otherwise called as slow VT, mm -hmm. slow ventricular tachycardia. So accelerated idiomatic rhythm. Classically, we are not seeing to that extent these days, because accelerated idiomatic rhythm. Imagine that a patient had a culprit lesion in a vessel. Suppose that vessel is opened up by doing a thrombolytic therapy in your ED. So what will happen? The flow is improving. So when the flow is improving, the myocardium will get irritated quickly, and they start developing ventricular tachycardia. So the classical thing what you see is called as accelerated idiomatic rhythm. When we call it as a VT, the rate should be above one fifty. But here the rate will not be above one fifty. It will be less than one fifty. It will be somewhere around hundred and hundred and twenty. What we can we'll otherwise call as slow VT, accelerated idiomatic rhythm. So that is again suggestive of that. it is a good sign or a bad sign it is a good sign because actually yes. the coronaries are getting opened up so when you see these are all called as reperfusion arrhythmias so when you see reperfusion arrhythmias for a patient who is you are thrombolyzing inside your ed that is actually a good sign so because every patient is going for a primary coronary intervention that is the reason why we are not seeing but reperfusion arrhythmias is one most common thing that among the reperfusion arrhythmia the most common one is accelerated idioventricular rhythm or you can call it as slow ventricular tachycardia to summarize what we have learned whenever a tachycardia is coming what we have to see is whether the patient is stable or unstable that is our priority followed by that you have to look for the qrs duration wide or narrow then regular or irregular depending upon that your treatment decide if the patient is unstable with whatever be the type of tachycardia the treatment is cardioversion and uh, if it is uh, stable you can look for the all your pharmacological management and amiodarone is one drug which can you can use it universally for all type of arrhythmia you can if you even if you don't know you can use amiodarone Okay fine thank you